Welcome everyone. Today I will present my master thesis about topic modeling of investment style news. I will start by introducing the context and the objectives before focusing on my contributions. So let's start with fairly new investment products which are called smart beta exchange traded funds. These funds have become increasingly popular among institutional investors during the past decade. In fact, the figure on the left shows the increasing assets under management and their number during the last few years. These products provide exposure to systematic risk factors that are rewarded by risk premiums. One of these factors is the small size factor. The corresponding risk premium is illustrated here on the right. More specifically, this figure shows the average annual return of size-based stock portfolios. And as you can see, the return of stocks with a small market capitalization is larger than the return of large cap stocks. Depending on their factor, smart beta ETFs can be categorized into styles like the previous small cap style. Considering the recent popularity of smart beta ETFs, one may wonder whether the news coverage of certain styles affects the allocation decision of institutional investors and thereby cash flows towards corresponding funds. This is the research question of Cédric Gillin's PhD thesis that provided the framework for this master thesis. Mathematically, this objective can be restated as the search for the regression coefficient beta that relates fund flows at time t to the news coverage of a certain style at t minus 1. This coverage can, for instance, be measured by the number of published articles related to this style. This general objective can further be refined by wondering whether specific topics within the previous news coverage influence these fund flows. Quantitatively, this objective consists in identifying the values of these topical betas by a regression analysis. This regression requires to determine the news coverage of the different topics. This finally leads to the objective of this thesis. In fact, the first objective is to identify the major topics in investment style news related to small cap investing. And the second objective is to cluster the news articles according to their topic. So for instance, we want to know whether article two is about topic one and topic three. Based on this clustering, it is then possible to analyze the topic coverage in each news magazine where these articles come from. Moreover, the importance of topics over time measured by their frequency of occurrence should be analyzed. This importance is precisely the missing ingredient in the previous regression model. To reach these objectives, I first reviewed the literature. Hence, I found out that methods to identify topics in large collections of documents are called topic models. These models are unsupervised machine learning methods based on the document term matrix. This matrix contains the frequencies of each term in each document. Hence, it has the dimensions m times v, where m is the number of documents and v the number of different terms in the corpus. The topic model then allows to decompose the document term matrix into two lower rank matrices, with k being the number of topics. The first matrix provides some information about the occurrence of topics in each document while the second matrix indicates which words are frequent in each topic. Over time, different topic models were developed. The first two methods, this means latent semantic analysis and non-negative matrix factorization, are essentially factorization methods of the document term matrix. Their drawback is mainly the difficulty to interpret word distributions as topics. A second category of methods are probabilistic topic models like probabilistic latent semantic analysis. This method has, however, no probabilistic model for topic proportions, which leads to further drawbacks. These drawbacks are solved by latent Dirichlet allocation. This method is based on a generative model for documents. This model describes how documents are created and formalizes this process in the language of probability. This process is illustrated on this slide by an article of the financial advisor, which is included in the corpus that will be analyzed afterwards. According to this model, topics are distributions over words. In fact, these lists show the words with the highest probability within these topics. Hence, the green topic seems to be about fund management due to the words fund, manage, and strategy. The probability of creating these topics can be computed by the first product in this equation. 
Besides the topics, LDA assumes that the proportions of each topic in each document are drawn from a Dirichlet distribution. According to this bar diagram, the most important topic in this document is fund management. This seems consistent since the article is about replacing a fund manager. The probability of creating these topic proportions is computed by this second product in this equation. Finally, to create the words, a topic is first assigned to each word position based on the topic proportions. This is the reason why there are more green coins than red coins. And then for each word position, the specific word is drawn from the assigned topic. The probability of creating these words is quantified by these last terms in this equation. Finally, the per-topic word distributions and the per-document topic proportions are computed by maximizing this probability for the analyzed corpus. So this explains how topics can be identified and how documents can be clustered. I also want to mention that I compiled the most extensive literature review of LDA and finance in my master thesis to determine how to best use this method. For timing reasons, I will however not go into details here. So let's now focus on our specific data. This data consists of investment style news related to small cap investing. More precisely, Gilles and colleagues created a unique corpus by collecting the articles of nine magazines targeting institutional investors, which are listed here on the right. The advantage of these magazines over real-time financial news is the aggregation of information so that style information is expected to be included. Articles related to small cap investing are then selected from this initial corpus by a lexicon-based approach. This means that articles containing the biogram small cap or a similar variation are selected. In this way, I ended up with 1,720 articles from 2010 to July 2018. This figure shows the resulting number of articles from each magazine during this period. In total, it's about 200 per year. Previously, I have already introduced the methodology, but now I will explain more precisely how the previous data was analyzed. To process this data, I used Python with the Natural Language Toolkit NLTK and the machine learning library Scikit-Learn. Moreover, I validated the methodology by the 20 news groups corpus for which the underlying topics are known. For instance, this text announced that a reward of $1 billion would go to the first corporation who successfully keeps at least one person alive on the moon for a year is part of this corpus and specifically the news group about space. This text, as well as the remaining corpus, is pre-processed by these operations on the left. So for instance, stop words, which are common words like that, would, the, are removed. Hence, we obtain more topically relevant information based on which the uh, document term matrix is built. Then LDA with symmetric Dirichlet priors is applied to compute the per document topic proportions and the per topic word distributions for a given number of topics. These matrices are then post-processed. For instance, in the context of the previous example, the most relevant words of topic 2 are space, launch, NASA, and so on. Hence it is labeled most likely space. Since labeling topics is not always straightforward, I tried to simplify it by the relevance measure of Sievert and Shirley and by including representative titles and, talk and documents of topics in the labeling uh, process. In our previous example, it can be seen that 72% of the previous document regarding the moon is about this topic too. So we essentially determined that it is about space as anticipated. Besides identifying topics, I wanted to know the topic coverage in each magazine and the importance of topics over time. Therefore, the absolute importance of a topic in a magazine is computed by the sum of the corresponding topic proportions for all documents in this magazine. And the relative importance of a topic is computed by normalizing these absolute values. The importance of a topic over time is computed similarly, but by summing over the documents published during the considered period. So now let's take a look at the results. This slide shows the top 15 words and the, uh, or the top 15 words of the five major topics which were manually labeled. So for instance, uh, the words 
market, year, equity, sector, company, and so on, seem to refer to the equity market, which is closely tied to the economy. Other topics are analyst research, trading and banking, retirement planning, indexes, ETFs and performance, and fund management and fund launches. Labeling topics is not straightforward, but these topics seem coherent. For instance, it is reasonable that indexes, ETFs and performance occur in one topic since the performance is usually measured by indexes and since indexes can be replicated by ETFs. Moreover, the titles of top articles of topics were used to label these topics. The titles here on the right are those of the topic fund management and fund launches. As you can see, titles like Manulife launches 50 new funds or Mayors and Power Mutual Funds announce co-portfolio manager and officer changes are consistent with the label. For more than five topics, the previous five topics either persist, disappear or specialize. For instance, analyst research trading and banking becomes analyst research, European banking and corporate banking when 15 topics are identified. Spurious topics, however, start to appear for 15 topics as suggested by the perplexity, which is a performance indicator of topic models. In fact, for more than 15 topics, the perplexity does not significantly decrease anymore. Besides identifying topics, I analyzed the topic coverage in each magazine. The table here on the left shows the relative importance of each topic in each magazine. This means their topic proportions. These proportions are in agreement with the topics suggested by uh, the expert of the corpus. For instance, he suggested that the Wells advisor frequently writes about new funds. This is actually true as indicated by the 59% of topic 5 that is about fund management and fund launches. Similarly, plan sponsor writes about past performance by the topic indexes, ETFs and performance. There are also other validating agreements. So for instance, plan sponsor and plan advisor have similar topic proportions due to numerous identical articles. Finally, I analyzed the importance of topics over time. The figure on the left shows the relative importance of topics for each year. As you can see, topic 5 about fund management and fund launches is the most significant topic in the data set. Moreover, topic 4 about indexes, ETFs and performance decreases. One could assume that fewer small cap ETFs are launched since this topic is mainly refined to ETF launches when more topics are identified. This interpretation is however hypothetical and it should be tested in future research. The figure on the right shows the relative importance of topics per month. And as you can see, a noticeable trend is the increase of topic 5 in January and its decrease at the end of the year, whereas topic 4 increases at that time. This could be interpreted as changes in fund management and fund launches preferentially occurring at the beginning of the year in response to their performance. It is, however, difficult to advance more precise interpretations. So in conclusion, I selected the topic model LDA and determined best practices by compiling the most extensive literature review of LDA in finance. Based on this method, I identified the major topics in a unique corpus related to small cap investing. Moreover, I clustered these articles according to their topics to characterize magazines and topical trends over time. The approach is mainly limited by the required expert knowledge to label topics and to interpret trends. Nevertheless, it allowed to transform qualitative textual data into topics and topic proportions. The next step is therefore to combine these results with quantitative data of smart beta ETFs to determine whether the media coverage of certain topics affects fund flows. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention.